Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the How to Build series where we're going through every single champion in the game and I'm putting together a quick reference guide for newer players who need a little guidance, uh, want to know how to, put, how to build a character and how to use them. I'm not doing masteries and late game builds because that gets a little convoluted and specific based on how you want to utilize a certain champ. Uh, so I'm not going to get into all that. Again, just guidance for the newer players who want to figure out how to use somebody or figure out if they're worth using. So let's talk about Fortress Goon. He's a defense champ. Base HP is pretty nice. Base defense is pretty nice as well. It's okay. Uh, it's not the highest on rare defense champs I've seen, but mixed with the HP, decent base stats. Speed's on the lower end for sure, but uh, maybe that won't be a huge deal. Let's get into it and talk about his skills. Attacks one enemy. Has a 15% chance of placing a 15% decrease speed debuff for two turns. So speed debuff on the first turn is great anywhere where there's a boss in particular. Uh, so so dungeons, even in campaign, it's not bad. Single target slows are nice. And then when you get to those boss stages in the campaign, this can be helpful if the fights are lasting a little while. But this is really going to shine for you in your potion keeps and your dungeons. Uh, anytime you can slow the boss, anything you can do to, to you know... Whoa. Totally forgot every word I've ever known ever in the English language. Anything you can do to interfere with the boss's ability to get turns and do damage on those turns is always helpful. So, um, decrease speed, decrease attack, of course defense break is also helpful, but things like that on first skills generally shine in dungeons. So, looking like a good dungeon champ right off the bat. I uh, for literally forgot every single word I've ever learned. Uh, Second skill, attacks all enemies, has a 40% chance of placing a 50% heal reduction debuff for two turns. Okay, I, I have, the 50% heal reduction always annoys me. I always wish it was just the debuff that just blocked heals, uh, but that's not what it is. This, this is. this is the weaker version of the heal reduction. Nevertheless, it'll be nice, and it's an AoE, which means it's nice on waves, anywhere in the campaign where waves have healers. Um, Again, in the dungeons where the waves have healers. In the spirit keep, it's going to be helpful. It's not as nice as 100% heal reduction, of course, in the spirit keep. But that 50% will give you an edge if you just don't have anything better for there. Uh, and also, worth mentioning, he scales off defense and attack. And he's a defense champ, so that that's a nice thing. It's, it's weird that, they, that he also scales off of attack, but... Um, but yeah, the, the, the AoE is nice, it's going to help you wave clear, and the heal reduction just prevents any, or, or at least dampens any heals that, that may happen along the way to the boss and, and the spirit keep for the boss. Third skill, heals all allies by 10% of their max HP, places a 30% increased defense buff on all allies. So it seems like they're giving him the, the weaker version of all the buffs and debuffs, but they're giving him quite a bit. He's, he's bringing a lot to the fight. He's just bringing the weaker versions of it to the fight. Uh, what I would really like to see here is, is skill ups that increase that heal. 10% is not much in the way of a heal. It's nice. It's a nice little AoE heal. Uh, and, you, and you get a defense buff in the midst or, or, or with it. But it's on a 5 turn cooldown, 4 turn cooldown uh, skilled up. I would love to see another level or two that would just bump that heal up a little bit. Even if we could get it to like 20 or 25%, that would be great. Um, and then he's got a defense aura in dungeons. So yeah, my suspicions seem to be confirmed. He, he seems like he's going to really shine in dungeons, although he's not going to be bad on a campaign team either. If you're pushing your way through the campaign and you're not to a point where you're trying to three-star everything, you're just trying to have a team to push through the campaign, he's not a bad candidate. He brings a lot to the fight. He's got the speed break, He's got the AoE, he's got the heal with the defense buff. He brings quite a bit to fights like that. So anywhere where there's waves and anywhere where there's a boss, yeah, he is going to be useful, I would say. So he's a, he's a pretty decent champ, actually, for the earlier game. I do believe that he'll fall off at some point. But earlier in the game, not a bad champ. So as far as how to gear him up, I think we just... Even though he scales, his damage does scale off of defense and attack... I don't think we want to sacrifice too much to put attack on him. His base attack is pretty low anyway, so it's going to be a little harder to scale up. And I don't think we want to sacrifice the things like defense, speed, and accuracy that we're going to want on him to get that attack up, to get a, a minor amount of damage out of him. And he is scaling off the defense as well. So I think, I think we're just going to build him like a defense champ. 
So I'm going to say a defense set's going to be pretty nice to have, an accuracy set's going to be pretty nice to have, and a speed set is going to be pretty nice to have because that base speed is low and you want as much of a bump there as you can get. So I'm, you're going to want to go defense percentage on the gloves, defense, defense percentage on the armor, and speed on the boots. And then in your substats, you're going to want to be looking for accuracy and speed, and then defense and HP are helpful. And then if you wanted to hunt down some attack in your substats, that's fine. But again, I would not sacrifice defense speed or accuracy for that attack. I, I don't think the attack is that important on him. So between those sets and those stats, between defense speed and accuracy sets, as well as focusing on those stats, whatever you have at your disposal, disposal, <laughs> disposable, whatever you have at your disposal to get those stats up is what I would recommend putting on him. And, and then, yeah, just running him in your dungeons, running him in your campaign. And, uh, and yeah, I think, I think he'll be decent for a while. You'll eventually pull somebody that'll make him, you know, kind of obsolete. But he'll be fun to use for a little bit. He's definitely bringing quite a bit to a fight. So that's going to wrap it up for Fortress Goon. Hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them below. If you have any comments about Fortress Goon, Goon drop them below. I cannot talk this video. <laughs> what the hell's going on with me? Um... Any, any of that, drop it below. Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful. I'll see you guys in the next one.